Anyway, <laughs> um, hello and welcome to the. Why are you being so awkward? <laughs> <laughs> It's my first one. I'm not used oh, to really? this. Yeah, oh, okay. you are my first guest. Thank you for having me as yeah, your first guest. You're welcome. <laughs> this is um, my first little attempt at a passion project mm-hmm. of mine titled The Not AJ's Talk Show. Um, and I'm here joined by. My full name is Kirsten Rio de O. I go by Rio, though. Beautiful. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. You and I have had many amazing discussions in the past. Yes. Um, but before we get into that, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? I am Filipino American young woman who's currently living in San Diego, and I've lived here for most of my life. Lived a little bit in Australia when I was younger, and I was born in Spain. Uh, my mom is half white, half Filipino. My dad is mostly filipino and a little bit of chinese but i mostly identify as filipino Mm. american myself Mm. i'm trying to learn tagalog so that i could be closer to my parents yeah and and just like filipino culture in general um i'm a theater graduate (laughs) (laughs) um i want to kind of create more content for Filipino women and Filipino Americans. Yeah, that's me. Wow, amazing. Okay, so you you talked about wanting to learn Tagalog, actually, Mm -hmm. so I kind of want to talk about that. Were you ever taught Tagalog, like, growing up? When I was younger, my parents said I was actually, like, kind of fluent. Oh, okay, cool. But I think going to school and Mm -hmm. also, like, my parents kind of wanted me to focus more on English and Mm -hmm. become more fluent at that and and so I kind of lost it along the Mm -hmm. way now I just understand and I can speak a little bit Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to really challenge myself because I'm taking an advanced Philippine like a Tagalog class this quarter right hopefully I'll come out stronger at the end of this <laughs> quarter. <laughs> no, I think I think that's amazing. I think for a lot of Filipino Amer- Filipino Americans just mm-hmm. growing up in general, some people were, are able to retain it like 100%. Mm-hmm. And then there are also a whole bunch of us who forget it completely. Yeah. Um, and I think that's so interesting because I, I look around like other cultures and other people of mm-hmm. different languages and it's really like cemented into them. And I remember at one point, yeah, like, um, if you tried to learn Tagalog extensively, it would be, like, distracting, or it would take away from you being, like, an American. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do do you ever No, yeah, I feel like it's that we collectively want to, like, be or feel so a part of Mm -hmm. the American community that we can't have, like, a a Filipino accent. Mm -hmm. One, I think it's because like Americans don't think even fil- t- like Tagalog or Filipino accents are, are sexy at all mm. right like yeah. there's that like British accents are mm. sexy and like or or whatever French accents yeah. are sexy like those foreign accents right. are like acceptable or like even German or mm. whatever mm-hmm. but like did has anyone ever <laughs> wanted to like you know like right. Filipino accents are also like the butts of a lot of um Mm. like comedy Mm. jokes right as you see like very popular um, comedy especially is 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 to use like that filipino accent right um and for some reason that that's just like that's what it is and so i think like a lot of filipino immigrants wanted to like get away from that and Mm. like also it's sometimes i feel like americans can't really understand that Mm. accent so they wanted to focus on us like Mm. the next generation or the incoming immigrants to like lose that and like really focus on your English and having it perfect. Yeah. 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 I mean, to basically assimilate mm-hmm. and, you yep. know, blend in. Um, and it's if you pay attention, like especially like on TFC and you hear some of the hosts and like the celebrities mm-hmm. and when they whenever they do speak English sentences, like it's it's a whole different tone too. like they yeah. really try their like for my father for example like his voice gets deeper mm-hmm. and when he tries to speak english he like really tries to not have the accent yeah. um despite like knowing the words and i think that's so interesting it's just so i don't yeah. know it's just something Especially, i picked up I think on a lot of like um 
what is it idols or mm. co- or contributors or something sure like, like, yeah like they're also s- coming more and more from like america like filipino mm. americans are making it big mm-hmm. in um the philippines mm-hmm. and like th- their accents in english are also like pretty good pretty yeah perfect yeah and yeah i think it's also just i want to learn like tagalog because i think in many ways in my own life because i am mixed Mm -hmm. i felt invalidated as a filipino like oh like you're only mixed or like you're mestiza yeah and so i feel like i always had to like prove i'm filipino um Mm -hmm. that i like identify with the culture and like i grew up with it and so like i feel like having the language at the back of my hand will like will like in a sense like make me feel closer and get to have this like i don't know magical proof card right I'd be like i am pinoy like right. <laughs> um which is kind of sad i don't know that like that thing i feel like i need to prove myself mm-hmm. like to my own community sometimes because mm-hmm. i feel like when people go like oh you're just like mestiza or like mm. you're not really filipino Right. And and so I don't feel like I belong in like any community which way. Interesting. Yeah. And like the way that yeah. America like I just told you that story right. like I was at a bar right. and, this, <laughs> and and there were a lot of like white people at this bar and I think it's just popular because they have beer and stuff I don't know. But this <laughs> white guy like came up to me and was like, "Where are you from?" That's like the first question he uh, asked me. And I was and so that's like that's the general like and I'm not saying like, oh, he just asked me this question. He asked me this question three times. Right. He was like, where are you from? Yeah. I said, San Diego. He said, where are you from again? I said, oh, I'm from San Diego. And then he asked me a third time. <laughs> I was like, can you hear? Like, I know the music in this club is loud, but I am like in your ear. I'm from San Diego. <laughs> um, yeah. That's I feel wild. Like, especially like for women. Yeah. Like, n- I don't know how what it's like for Filipino men, but for women, it, we get a lot like, oh, like, what are you? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. are you from? Mm-hmm. I can't p- pinpoint like. <laughs> I No, I, I mean, almost like this word's going to screw yeah. me over, but like as if we're like a fetish, yeah. like there's this whole issue with like Asian fetishes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I've he- literally heard guys that say like, yeah, like I like, I like uh, Asian girls. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me this? Why? <laughs> right. Um, no, it's because they, they are sexually attracted to, yeah. I'm not sure if it's to me or mm. to what I am. Right. Yeah. That's, At that point, like, and then you you put it in your mental box like oh don't talk to this one right <laughs> right oh it's like oh okay thanks bye yeah, like yeah. Oh. except like sometimes they're coworkers and I can't really mm. avoid them and yeah it's so weird these interactions and they're very micro too mm-hmm. I would say you don't realize like some of these can be a little bit questionable in yeah. terms of what they're educated on in terms of people like of color like mm-hmm. you and me or women of color. And it's it's so interesting that you bring up this, like, feeling I, of yeah. belonging. Like, yeah, I mean, what did you want to... No, no, I, I when you see, like, the yeah. micro stuff, I feel mm. like that goes a long way of, like, making you feel like an outsider in your own community. Mm. Um, and, but also, like, the really, like, blatant stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I've been told to, like, go back to my own country, yeah. Yeah. which is... Now you just feel like, yeah, why am I here? Right. I don't know. Like, yeah, the the micro stuff. I feel like you can handle because they are like little things that you can kind of just ignore or, right. or like respond to. Right. But like out blatant out kind of racism is harder to handle. Mm-hmm. I think for me, like that's just me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and having to address that yeah yeah we've talked about this like having yeah. to address that especially with our culture and the kind of political climate right now um i can't describe how it makes you feel i really can't <laughs> like 
ah, like to go back to that moment, like when mm. I was in that grocery store. Mm. This is a the AJ knows about the story, but mm-hmm. I was in a grocery store yeah. like last year, I think, and it was near the school, mm-hmm. and someone told me like to speak English and to go back to my country, and I was like, oh, like I didn't say anything. I just stood there speechless mm. and scared because this guy was like a tall white guy, like he was how he was like like an older mm. man but right. I wasn't about to pick a fight or say anything because uh, I was kind of terrified but I don't know I think it just puts an emphasis about like I do not look like what traditionally mm. Americans are comfortable with mm-hmm. or whatever that means which is it's, funny because we're, yeah. we're all immigrants here right the natural Americans are Native <laughs> Americans <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's like a whole different, mm-hmm. anyway, different yeah. beast to tackle. So there's always, from what I get, there's always been this feeling of displacement, and f- from whatever side, American side or Filipino side, it's like really difficult to find where you belong and can truly identify with. And part of it, in my personal experience, I think, is due to the fact that I don't necessarily look like or fit into this mold of what. I think the camera shut off, but we have another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but fitting into this this mold of what every Filipina looks like mm-hmm. and then how, like, Filipino beauty standards have evolved to make us believe, like, Filipinos only look one way. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I mean, growing up, did you ever feel enticed to look more American or look whiter or brighter? You know, was that ever imposed onto you growing up? Because I know it was for me, at least. Well, growing up, yeah. Yeah. I was, like, I didn't want to get darker. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, like, go tan in the sun. Because I can tan pretty easily. I don't burn. Mm -hmm. and, And I remember just, like, in high school, like, wanting to look not as tan or not Mm -hmm. as, like, I wanted to look paler almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... It's it's almost like really ridiculous because I kind of I was like almost like when I was younger I was almost proud that like I was like my mom is half white mm-hmm. and I I was like I could try I wanted to like retain that kind of whiteness so that I because I wanted to be an actress too and I saw that like growing up all the famous actors who were named Kirsten were all white Mm. and you know Kirsten Dunst Kirsten Stewart and I just wanted to be like them um but then my whole relationship with like being what a quarter white because my mom is half um has changed a lot Mm because there's a whole backstory with that Mm. um like that's family stuff I can't really talk mm-hmm. about but um and then I started using Rio because I felt like that embodied who I am more mm-hmm. and so when okay. I came to college I, I started going by Rio and I, I know my parents felt a little salty about that because you know they they're the ones who gave me that name they gifted it to me right. and I, I mean I still use it with my family and some of my friends but Rio felt Rio felt more connected to my how how I identified like my name matched my face mm. that's how I felt about it mm-hmm. um, and my skin color because um, cur- like I know my parents chose Kirsten because they thought it was an, a beautiful American name mm. American girl name and yeah. it is but it, it just like growing up and all those like microaggressions that we were talking about it didn't like really fit mm. um for me yeah. wow what about yeah. you i mean i it's interesting you bring that up because i always felt like the name angeline was <laughs> it connotated such like this positive like you know pure mm-hmm. aspect in that and it's not that like i'm not any of those things but i also feel like it I mean, it's so weird how your name can be associated with so much already yeah. before you even define it for yourself and who you are. And I don't I don't think my parents were trying to Americanize any part of me. Mm-hmm. 
um, I think that it was just they kind of were left to their own devices to <laughs> find something unique. Um, but I mean, in in terms of feeling American, mm -hmm. it's interesting because I never felt Filipina enough. Mm -hmm. because I would be like extremely light-skinned my whole life like mm -hmm. I would try to get tan mm -hmm. and I would get burnt <laughs> or it would take me a really really long time um, and then my friends would always avoid the Sun and be like I don't want to get dark mm -hmm. and it was so weird for me yeah. to experience that because we're all Filipinos all of our parents are full mm -hmm. Filipinos like the people I grew up with and yet he, what do people usually like assume that you are people always think i'm like half white oh yeah and but the high school i came from is it, is it because like people think like you're like really yeah like, lighter skin and maybe your eyes yeah i think it yeah i think my eyes also confuse mm -hmm. people a lot but it's interesting like in high school everyone always just referred to me as the asian kid because like I could count all the Asian American students yeah. with one hand at my high school, so it was not diverse. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you lived in where? Where? <laughs> North Arlington, New Jersey. New Jersey. Hey, <laughs> what's up? Uh -huh. um, yeah. So I wasn't American enough to begin with. Like growing mm -hmm. up, I was always the Asian kid. Uh -huh. But then like you go home to the Philippines and you're 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 american enough you're yeah. like glorified yeah. for being oh my god she looks ha she looks racially ambiguous uh -huh. she has big eyes she has light skin and i always felt I, I, like a fraud almost yeah, i get yeah. it mm -hmm. do you have you ever had like people praising you for looking different oh, all or the time well i feel like for from the filipino like um community i've gotten a lot of like it's I got a lot of oh you look mestiza mm. and 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 always comments that are attached to that or like that's good mm. like you you don't look dark or like you mm -hmm. don't um, it's always that it's good mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, and that it's pretty and that it's like and it, it usually comes from older generations right. yeah which is fine because I can't really feel like one it's a compliment and I can't really be like like yeah your compliments kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a little, yeah. Just, just a little just bit. A, I mean, you know. like, it's, a, it's a nice thing to, like, s to compliment someone, like, in a way that they're really saying, like, oh, you're beautiful, mm. right? And I do think, um, you know, being mixed is beautiful, just mm -hmm. as, like, being full. Sure, yeah, um, for sure. But to place a kind of, like, superiority on it oh, ma yeah. makes me feel like, well, like, thank you, but... I think everyone right. of every like skin tone is beautiful, and mm -hmm. th th there's no need to attach the superiority right. onto it to for it to be an even valid right. compliment. Right. Yeah. But if you, and it's so weird because if you look at Filipino media, and you look at all the celebrities mm -hmm. and the entire beauty industry and the media industry you only see what's represented as somebody who is either mixed or has mm -hmm. really, really light skin. Yeah. And doesn't, some of them yeah. are my favorite. Okay. Some of them are <laughs> some of my favorite artists. Don't right. get me yeah. wrong. Yeah, I yeah. love them. But I think there should be more. Right. <laughs> like, I think right. there should be way more. Like, that is just not it. Like, those artists, I think, are good and they should stay and they should keep doing what sure, they're doing. Sure, of course, yeah. But we should... There's so much more. Like yeah. wow, like we were talking about in the car. Yeah. I was saying like we literally have a lot of dark skinned Filipino women. Oh, yeah. So yeah. like that's all like right. that's that's I feel like that's like eighty percent right. of the yeah, Philippines. No, exactly. And, and even Filipino Americans. Um and the people that we like the actresses that we see, not just in the Philippines, but also like the Filipino American actresses, mm. they're all like pretty pretty western looking right. and almost like light skin so i'm right. kind of just and there's nothing wrong with that like i i think mixed people should be celebrated too right but we need more color up yeah. in this baby yeah right here. <laughs> um <laughs> for sure that's that yeah i and it, it's it's so i mean yeah like you said 80 percent mm-hmm of Filipinas that we know and that we know of. I, I, I'm, not, I'm just guessing. I'm not saying like I it's mean, actually 80%. Right. Yeah. But I mean, if you, if you look, if you go to the Philippines. And you walk down the street. Exactly. Like, like 
people tend to have darker skin yeah. and you know s- there are certain features that are more staple and like common in the filipino mm-hmm. culture like you know wider noses or whatever mm-hmm. um and yet that's not seen a lot a- yeah despite like the growing number mm-hmm. of of it is and and you know being half and being mixed and all that doesn't make you any less filipina than the than the next person with different set of features Mm -hmm. but yeah yeah, it's it's so interesting to think about how nobody recognizes that and thinks that it's an issue until recently at least because i feel like people are starting to speak up and starting to embrace you know yeah. I, I i met liza sobrano do you know her she's a like, yeah she's a no i'm in actress. love with her I, yeah i'm in I love with her too like, amazing <laughs> um, i met her once and she was just the kindest person ever um but also like she recently did an ad with um Jollibee, and i saw this and i was like girl oh my god <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> Wait, I've never seen that. And this is so recent. Like, like oh, no. I'm just like, oof. Like, what? I just never. Wait, okay. For those at home listening <laughs> who can't see, <laughs> who are lucky enough to not see this, she has like. She what? has an afro. She like, has like a black like, afro. Like type 4C yeah. curls. Curls. Like, this is. Oh, I was no. just looking at it. I was like, girl, like. There are some black this Filipino is, women yeah. in the world, and you gotta wear that hair <laughs> that that get ridiculed literally daily, probably for having hair like that. Especially yeah. within our Filipino, com- like I can already hear yes the the older titas and mm-hmm. titos mm-hmm. saying like, "Why is your hair like that?" Yeah. Oh my god. And I, they probably said like have felt ugly because of it exactly. A lot, yeah. Like, and because we have such, you know strict beauty standards yeah. and i just when i saw that i was like oh liza what are you doing mm. <laughs> you are a fair-skinned woman yeah. with straight hair yeah. i you you can have curly hair you can curl your hair but to have like like you said tight curls yeah and their coils and their i'm just like what are you it trying to do i'm just wondering i yeah and then people will be like, oh, well, it's just a hairstyle. Just but I think if you look at, like, the history of the Philippines and how they treat people who don't fit these, like, normal beauty standards, yeah. you will recognize that doing something like this is insensitive mm-hmm. to those who are actually, like, having hair of that type. Um, but I also think, you know, honestly, I love you, Liza, but I think she's just going with the like she has no she's say going with the flow. yeah i mean going with the flow it's she, jolly bee i don't know what she's she yeah. probably has like this whole empire of like people she has to listen to and these managers and yeah. you know i don't i don't think that they do get a say in yeah, what they it. can she's what, and can't like do 20 19 years old i don't yeah she's young she's, she's probably young. like um, our age yeah i think it's different in the philippines i think like pe- people in the philippines don't care if they see that yeah. Jollibee commercial, they won't care. Right. But here in America, yeah. I was like, oh, like, I'm yeah. American. Like, knowing, like, the st- kind of racism and colorism that takes Ugh. place in America. Yeah. And I, I think there's there's way too much of a strict culture in the Philippines because of, you know, we have to respect our elders. And, like, there's yeah. a lot of respect, yeah. which is good. Yeah. But, like, that that's not talked about. I bet it's not even... She hella posted that too, and I was. She was like, "What is Jolly Bee doing? Should we boycott Jolly Bee?" <laughs> that has, not, and also like on a marketing standpoint, that photo literally like you could not tell me that was a Jolly Bee ad. Yeah, because there was ah, nothing yeah. about it that indicated it was Jolly Bee chicken. It's just like that. Just like an and afro, she, like the afro, and then like she uploads the whole like oh her here she looks normal yeah here. why she got normal hair here and then she she's like <laughs> pop star there she's like ariana grande there and and then she's what like doing r&b shit there i don't get it Chris, crispy spice fries wait, wait those look so good <laughs> get them at jolly Bee. oh my okay but uh... it's so not her too because it's she's not. just a sweet human being but I'm like, what is she trying to do? <laughs> She's um, okay. Any Filipino like 
star is just a cog in the machine, honestly. In my personal opinion. Mm. I I don't it's why I believe like she had even if she wanted to like maybe protest some of the design like, choices. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they would have cared enough to listen to her. And that sounds really dark and mean, but Yeah. I get what you're saying. But I mean again, they might just like not even know that's like a cult, like a type of cultural True. appropriation. They might just think like, yeah, it's just a hairstyle. Right. And there's no I mean yeah. there is a lack of like just education on mm-hmm. how people who look different live throughout society, whether it's in the Philippines or in America. I think another thing I want to touch upon um, in regards to Filipino media is just um, body image alone is pretty insane. So I don't know if you've heard, but this was about like two years ago, but Camila Mendez and Lily Reinhardt, the the actors from Riverdale. Oh, the two okay. Main actors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two girls. Yes, I yeah. watched Riverdale. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just the first season. <laughs> that was the best season. Okay, I'm season good. <laughs> one. Um, but they they actually posed around the time when Riverdale like first was first getting really popular. They mm-hmm. posed for Cosmopolitan Philippines. Oh. Okay. And then after their because they, they were the front cover and after their photos were released. Um, it was very obvious that it was photoshopped. Oh. And it photoshopped both of their bodies to be skinnier. Um, and I think even their skin, I mean, Camilla's skin to be lighter because she is like Brazilian. So she's tanner. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they photoshopped her, her skin to be lighter. And if you like, even if you look at it at a first glance, you can obviously tell it's been modified. Yeah. Like it was not. And to, to, yeah. Just lighten Camilla's skin, which is already light. True. Like, yeah. I'm just like, whoa, what? Yeah. You made her like Lily Reinhardt's yeah. tone or something? Yeah. <laughs> and think... then you lighted Lily? <laughs> <laughs> what is she now? <laughs> I'm wondering. I don't even know what this picture looks like. <laughs> um. Yeah. It was so bad. And and they responded. And they oh, they were, responded. Yeah, and they were like, this is not us. We don't condone this. Camilla talked about like her history with eating disorders and Oof. her body dysmorphia. Okay. And it frustrated me because, you know, honestly, I said to myself, I was like, of course this was the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Of course we were, like, our country had to be the one that that gets exposed for this. And good thing that they did. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that they pointed it out because uh, it was just bad. Yeah. And it's been happening. Like, you can see it all over in the Philippines alone. But it just i don't know that irked me and this whole idea of like you need to be a size 0 and you need to be tiny was really never sat well with me at least i think you're right i mean one they should have known better <laughs> <laughs> yeah to like to this I think also it just doesn't happen in the Philippines. Like I see it like happen often where artists are like, "Can you not Photoshop mm-hmm. me?" Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, it because like cosmopolitan Philippines like did that. It it kind of puts a spotlight on the type of beauty standards that we have, which yeah. is being really skinny. That's, yeah, that's. I mean when. I, I know this because I like to follow beauty pageants and like when Pia Wurtzbots like mm, yeah. did her she she was called like straight up fat and she's <laughs> not she, <laughs> she's so what? skinny oh, the God. only reason why people thought she was fat I think was because she had a big yeah like um yeah chest size yeah like, brazier whatever you call it and I can't believe people called her fat what and that's unbelievable Cause she is skinny. She, yeah. But the what? only reason like people said like said that was because like I guess her boobs made her look bigger in a sense. I I have no idea. Oh my goodness. But thank God she won. <laughs> I know. We we love you, Pia. Yes. <laughs> oh man. And and that alone, like I think 
beauty pageants take a like huge influence on like beauty standards in the Philippines because we we look up to those people. Oh yeah, oh, we yeah. want to be known as beautiful people. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and our, you know, the what is it? The love pairings, the idols. Liza's mm-hmm. super skinny. Like yeah, <laughs> I met her. She's really skinny. Right. <laughs> and that's not. I mean. Be healthy, like be good, and uh, that's all like I I can say. And I I wish like more independent f- films will get like popular, mm. and those independent films will include women of different types of yeah skin color and body type. Right, and it's the same to be said here in America too. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think here in America people are hopefully starting to be more like inclusive and realizing like every single person has a different body shape Mm -hmm. and you can't just say being like a size zero is have you seen rihanna's um savage x fenty fashion show i I saw clips of it it was dope it was super empowering Mm -hmm. i think to finally like know and see that like these different body shapes can be normalized because they are normal (laughs) they are normal oh my god um, and I watch like a lot of fashion shows too because I just like fashion like I like right, clothes yeah. and stuff and to be honest they're all like that fashion mm-hmm. industry type standard mm-hmm. skinny really skinny yeah. and you and almost like if you are I also watch a lot of America's Next Top Model no. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that, that to be a model if you are not skinny you are now a plus size model you can't yeah. just be a model yeah um which is depressing because how many women in America or in the Philippines are size zero? Right. Right. How many? I don't yeah. know. Like, yeah. <laughs> the country likes to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and people aren't born size zeros either. I think yeah. there's this like misconception like, oh, you got to where you are because like poor diet or mm-hmm. whatever. You don't exercise. But like growing up, I've always had like, like I was just a little bit bigger. I was a little bit bigger than I was a little bit taller than everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think I was fat until like high school, and then like knowing that I have bigger boobs or yeah. I have a bigger like hips or whatever, bigger thighs. Like, does that make me fat? Am I no. fat? Am I plus I size? No, no, not to me. You're not. But and and right and even and and what sucks is that like. In the Philippines, if you are anything other than a size zero, you are told. Like, you yeah. are made sure of it. And, like, family would, like, tell me, oh, you've gained weight. Oh, mm-hmm. you look a little big. Mm-hmm. And it's it's wrong. It's so wrong <laughs> um, to normalize that type of behavior because it can be extremely detrimental yeah. and cause body dysmorphia. And I blame a lot of, like, the Philippines and, and how, their representation of beauty and beautiful mm-hmm. bodies to like for the reason why sometimes i will feel insecure about my own and yeah that's just some some truth Mm. and they feed us there too like (laughs) how dare you (laughs) it's like so confusing yeah it's like you want me to eat more but you also just like called me fat 10 minutes ago yeah And that's absurd because I think you have a great body. Like, well, you don't you. even look, like, in terms of that, what you just said, fat. Like, you, mm. you're you not that, or at least what the society has labeled people. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's rough. And I don't feel fat, and I love my body. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, it's so weird when you enter a different environment like the philippines and Mm. everybody's used to everyone being super skinny and it's like well just because i don't look like that doesn't mean i'm like bad or that i'm yeah totally i just you know i went to the philippines over the summer and after having like won something from miss filipino international right yeah i you know going to the philippines i always felt like i had to like look good and that's mm. true i mean like i think you you should be proud of like how you present yourself to people mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you know like after i eat food because we go we go eat out there right i always like i because i ate a lot I, I would be bloated and i always felt like no like people think like i'm a beauty queen like i gotta 
hide it and I gotta like not like look and I always felt like I had to look on point and have makeup on and oh wow because I always wanted to present myself in the best way but at the same Mm -hmm. time it it, it is a pressure yeah to to not oh yeah yeah gotta maintain well we'll see still got another year to go (laughs) there you go yeah um and yeah i mean i have my own experiences with that beauty pageant alone Mm -hmm. and i think one there in terms of for miss filipina international we like one of my favorite previous queens yeah um Alyssa, she's like darker skinned Mm -hmm. and she's beautiful Mm -hmm. um and she she talks to me about like what what it's like like being a darker skinned like filipina identifying woman and yeah having won that pageant um i think she's such a role model she's so cute Uh (laughs) but but previously like our 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 current winner now she's half black too oh wow Our quarter I don't, wait, I think she's half black and half Filipino. Oh, wow. So I, I think in terms of, like, like, like being, like, light skin versus, like, dark skin, like, our pageant embraces, like, beautiful is beautiful no matter oh, what I love your that. skin tone yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, yeah. And, and, and now that I think about now that I'm saying that out loud, like, our winner is half black, like... Yeah. And this is the biggest Filipina pageant mm. in America. Mm. That's I think that's something to right. say about yeah. you know cuz for I feel like if that happened in the Philippines like oh yeah I feel like that would be like whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah but here like I'm super proud of wow, it and, yeah. and I think it's cool that I got to be a, a part of a pageant that like just celebrates all kinds of different Filipinas yeah um and we 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 were all beautiful we all came from different mm-hmm. backgrounds and, yeah yeah I actually didn't know that, so it's yeah, actually really cool you know. to <laughs> yeah, it's cool to know. Yeah. Like, shout out to her, like you know, yeah, go, like good job. I guess to finish off the discussion, I don't want to like leave this talk show <laughs> complaining and like talking crap about <laughs> talking crap <laughs> Filipina beauty standards. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's safe to say we're both very proud of yeah. our Filipina identity. I mean, you wrote a whole play. And directed it Mm -hmm. and acted in it, Uh, um, talking about the Filipina experience. Um, And I guess I want to ask you, what can we do now? Like, what can people like you and me, other Filipinos that may be watching, what is it that we can do to dispel some of these standards and start the conversation of accepting us for who we are as Filipinas? And embracing everything that we are, essentially. I think one thing that would be healthy for our mental state is to find a space where you feel comfortable to have your own voice. Mm. And for you, it's this, this, I like this passion oh, project you. that you're doing. Yeah. Um, or any other space that you feel comfortable. Right. But I think... Um, we all will hold some type of insecurity or some heartfelt, you know, sad feeling about how we don't fit in in a certain mm-hmm. way. And it's connected to our identity or how we look. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's like, for example, your white peers at your high school that's just called you the Asian girl... I think it'd be good for all of us to practice like hey i actually don't feel comfortable Mm. like just being identified like that Mm -hmm. and just just having your voice heard i think is good enough sometimes obviously there there there's more measures to be taken but taking that first step and being like hey like i actually don't feel comfortable at you telling me i'm i'm fat (laughs) yeah (laughs) right like taking that first step and and just telling them how you feel mm-hmm. and hopefully being heard. Yeah. I think that's truly powerful, like having your voice, like to be able to wield it in a way that you get to be treated how you want to be treated. Mm. Um, 
Because you know that saying, like, treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. Well, like, let's be honest. Like, you should treat people how they want to be treated. Not, sure, yeah. Not how you want to be treated. Because you, you, everyone's different, mm, you know? Right. Um, so that just involves communication um, in terms of, you know, battling these types of comments. Right. Um, I think... I personally want to take on like the, the yeah. I remember telling you the kind of like projects that I want to do in the yeah, future. Yeah, and you're like, oh, they're gonna be like Filipino American, like they're gonna take place in America. Mm-hmm. I I I said no because I actually want it to take place in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the sole reason that we were talking about, there's not enough representation for women who are not skinny mm-hmm. <laughs> or in. in and those beauty standards and women who are darker skin tone mm. half black half you know yeah. we need we need more of that yeah and i think it i think th- if that's what i'm passionate about is directing and acting yeah. that i want to bring it towards things that i think need to have more attention sure yeah and so but that's just for me but i think all if a filipino woman or Filipino American women, if you are passionate about something, go for it. Yeah. Don't let anyone like tell you otherwise. Mm. Is what I am trying to say. Like, if your passion is to go into nursing, then do it. Yeah. Right. I know it's a stereotype, but <laughs> but do it. But yeah. If you want to be a poet, mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. You'll be the first. Like, you'll be the first one that people will hear- heard of mm-hmm. in your community or something. Probably, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, most likely. <laughs> most likely. I, I, most Filipino people, when I tell them that my major is theater, they oh. go like, "Oh, yeah, theater. <laughs> yeah." It's like, is that is that form of nursing? <laughs> like, you mean like medical theater? Yeah. No, yeah. And and for the most <laughs> part, like, there hasn't been. Like in the Western world, a lot of like you know recognition yeah, sure. for the achievements that our culture has done mm. and and what we do. I think just just do it. Just do what you are passionate about in the face of what you might struggle with and conquer in the future. Yeah. Awesome. Oof. Thank you so much, Rio, <laughs> for <laughs> being my first ever guest. In this it was my pleasure. Talk show, not talk show. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Any last words? Any? I think just remember what I said. Okay. Your voice, it's important. Love that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. This now concludes the first episode. AJ, not talk show. <laughs> Wait, what is it called? The, not talk. The not talk. The not AJ. Not, the not AJ's talk show. The not AJ's talk show. Yeah. You should have like a little jingle. Not AJ's talk show. So right. like, you know what I'm talking about? You, you, like at the beginning yeah. of the. You can sing it. Intro. No, I'll record. No, no, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay.